Thanks, everyone. Uh, thank you to Richard and to Kathy for uh, putting on the, uh, this great event. And, uh, we're so happy with uh, this great turnout. So, uh, I will talk a little bit about the state of Web3 today and uh, just give a, a high level overview of, of what we're doing at the Web3 Foundation uh, with the Polkadot Project and some other initiatives. So, what is Web3? Uh, Web3 is Gavin Webb's vision for a decentralized, serverless internet uh, where users have greater control over their own privacy, their sovereign identity, their financial accounts, and effectively their own destiny. Uh, where decentralized peer-to-peer -peer networks leveraging trustless incentivization through crypto-economic design uh, deliver these items to, to users. And why do we call it Web3? Uh, mostly because, so in the 90s we went through Web1, which was static, read-only websites, um, no monetization, really poor UI, uh, UX design. Uh, we migrated uh, in kind of the early 2000s into what we now call Web2. This is more dynamic websites. Uh, users could generate uh, more content, um, proliferation of many platforms in this case. We also saw the proliferation of uh, social and mobile, uh, but monetization was stuck mostly in, still in a advertising model or what evolved as time moved on was the data sales model. Uh, privacy issues have come up and we've had a massive consolidation of wealth and power on the internet. We're only a handful of uh, of companies own the vast majority of, of the data on the internet and commercialize it as they see fit. Um, and so now we are moving uh, into the dawn of a new era. Uh, and this is where decentralized applications uh, are deployed as smart contracts, or, or in the case of Polkadot, as, as parachains, um, and run on a WASM virtual machine. Um, monetization is built directly in the protocol layer, uh, which is far more compelling. Users have better control over their privacy and over their data. And more importantly, there's far better distribution of wealth and power um, in Web3. Even today, uh, we have a higher Gini coefficient among uh, most blockchain ecosystems than we see uh, in, the world, in the world at large. Uh, so why does this matter? It matters because Web2 has failed us. Um, a small cartel of companies own the vast majority of cloud compute and cloud storage uh, globally. Um, and an even smaller cartel of companies own all of your data. Uh, they control your data and they commercialize it as, as they see fit without including you. Um, you are the product of Web2. Uh, I often say that we shouldn't get the use of Facebook or WeChat or Twitter for free, we should be paid to use these, uh, these platforms and share our data with these platforms. Um, and what I am actually really surprised that today and you know, on the cost of 2019, the monetization strategy of the internet is largely the same that it was in the 90s. It's still mostly advertising uh, and, and, and now data sales. I think we deserve that, um, and, and this is what Web3 is all about. So, some uh, interesting sort of cultural items in, in, in our community around Web3. Uh, we are of the opinion that governance is a noble pursuit in and of itself. We can create borderless uh, public goods commons with representation and, uh, and, and governance. We need more safe spaces for experimentation in our industry. Uh, uh, experimentation around different crypto economic models, around governance, and we need more upgradable protocols uh, that allow us to push the vanguard of, of crypto forward. And finally, uh, we need to solve the issues of, of scalability um, and usability while ensuring privacy and decentralization. And this requires a novel approach to architecture, which uh, brings us to Polkadot. 
Polkadot is interoperability infrastructure for Web3. It's a connective tissue that brings together different siloed blockchains. Uh, it's an incredibly ambitious project. Uh, allows for parallelized, parallelized security, um, arbitrary smart contracting interaction across chains, arbitrary messaging across chains, uh, I should say. Uh, it's built on a hybrid consensus that allows for very fast uh, transaction finality, but also sufficient security and decentralization. Uh, there's data governance to guide and accelerate uh, innovation. I'm of the opinion that a chain that has on-chain on governance will evolve faster than chains that don't. And I think we're going to see this take hold. Uh, and it's led by Parity, um, certainly one of the strongest teams in the space. I've spent the last five years spending most of my time evaluating teams in the space and, and deploying capital um, based on those evaluations. And usually you see a good blockchain team has three or four or five <coughs> talented engineers working on kind of low layer technologies deep down the stack. Uh, and this team is fully 50 deep of some of the best minds in the space, uh, you know, pushing the vanguard of this industry forward. A quick overview of Polkadot. So you've got kind of a base relay chain that coordinates consensus and relays transactions between different chains that relays that, those messages uh, cross chain. Uh, the different chains are known as parachains in, in Polkadot. Uh, and so this can be a, a chain that is built on substrate and deployed natively to, to Polkadot. Or we can create a bridge and create and, and bridge Polkadot's relay chain to a legacy chain like, say, Zcash or, or Ethereum. One of the great advantages uh, in scalability is we allow them for parallelized security. Um, so with Polkadot, if you're deploying as a relay chain, you can offload your security either to the relay to, to baseline relay chain or to a, another chain on the network. Oh. So again, this is, this is sort of what I'm talking about when, when I say that a novel approach to architecture allows for uh, dramatically improved scalability. Uh, one of the things I'm most excited about this project is the roadmap. Uh, so in the history of our industry, we have never seen a major project ship a major milestone on time. Uh, and this will be the first project, to my knowledge, in the history of our space to ship ahead of schedule. Uh, and again, that goes back to the technical leadership uh, of Gavin and his team at Parity. Uh, some cool things being built on Polkadot. Uh, so you've got Substrate, which I talked about. So Substrate is a framework for deplo building, deploying a blockchain very quickly uh, and easily on top of, of Polkadot. Uh, highly adaptable, uh, native like client, um, built-in governance, uh, and you can very quickly deploy as a pair chain. And so, instead of having to build the entire stack yourself, you can focus on just that innovation that, that, that you have designed, whether it's a consensus mechanism, or some kind of governance mechanism, or, or maybe an application. Uh, it's built using, or, or compiles down to WebAssembly, <coughs> so, compiles down a web assembly, uh, a web assembly for virtual machine, um, uses libp 2 uh, Primary implementation is in Rust, but we'll see another, another implementation in JavaScript. And we're totally open to uh, proposals and, and teams working on, on further things within Substrate. Edgeware, which is a project that I'm uh, particularly interested in. Um, this is a test net with real financial incentives for testing different governance mechanisms. So I personally would like to test, say, quadratic voting, test multi-layer participation in voting, um, and I think there's lots of diff different interesting things that we can play around with. Um, I was involved with the, the DAO in the early days, and I am of the opinion that it is, it is time
time to see the return of the Dow. And, um, and so Edgewater will be an experimental testnet uh, deployed on Polkadot. Uh, and Dylan will talk more about it. But there are lots of other projects. Um, whether it's legacy chains like Zcash or, or <coughs> Ethereum that will have, have bridges, or new chains like Blink and Agoric that will deploy natively on Polkadot um, at, as their, their, their primary implementation. There's lots of really interesting teams uh, building in this ecosystem, and we're starting to see a real groundswell around this community, <coughs> and I'm tremendously excited by it, and this is why I'm, I'm focusing around this community uh, going forward. Uh, and on that point, so it's a strong and vibrant community growing, and uh, now you're all part of it, and, and uh, uh, you know, we're here today and, and available uh, to jam with you guys on different concepts. Feel free to come up and talk about your ideas or, or your projects and how you can get involved. Um, we're, we're definitely interested in, in bringing along as many people as, as we can, and certainly interested about uh, the community out, out here. <coughs> so, do you want to reach out? These are ways to get, uh, get a hold of us, and uh, I also have a WeChat that you, we can exchange contacts and uh, continue chatting. Um, and then, without further ado, uh, Gavin will walk through. Uh, more about parity and its governance.